Welcome to The Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. Brought to you by Dallas Theological Seminary. Well, welcome to The Table Podcast, where we discuss issues of God and culture. My name is Bill Hendricks. I'm the Executive Director for Christian Leadership at the Hendricks Center. And I want to introduce my co-host, Casey Olander. Yes, I'm the web content specialist at the Hedrick Center. So in Matthew 28, we have what has been called the Great Commission, which most all of us are probably very familiar with. The Lord told us to go and make disciples of all the nations, all the people groups. And many uh, folks down through the years have interpreted that to mean that we need to go, meaning we need to physically travel to distant places, encounter different cultures in order to begin the process of uh, creating Christ followers, which is absolutely needed. But we have an unusual dynamic that has come about just really in the last generation or two, where we have vast numbers of people from different cultures coming certainly to the United States and to Europe. It certainly takes place elsewhere in the world but we have many people who are not native North Americans or Europeans, but they're coming to those regions to study, to do business. Uh, There's no end of diasporas of different people groups taking place, Chinese, Spanish, many Africans. Uh, This is a global phenomenon. There's the whole phenomenon of refugees. And this has tremendous impact on our understanding of the Great Commission because when we say go, there's a sense in which we no longer have to go. The world is coming to our doorstep if we live in North America or Europe. And, uh, and that means we have an opportunity to have a global ministry without even leaving our city in many cases. And that's what we want to consider today. And to help us with that, we've got some deep and Pranutha uh, Malakov, uh, who are with International Students Incorporated. And uh, uh, Sandeep is the campus minister with yep. ISI and a, and a DTS grad, yes, DTHM degree. And uh, Pranutha, you're uh, working in our IT department here at DTS right. as the senior systems administrator, yes. and also working on your PhD up at the uh, University of Texas at Dallas, where you all are with ISI. That's true. Thank yes. you for being with us today. Absolutely, so thank you. Pleasure. And and we kind of get a bonus. Uh, guest who's also a co-host because, in fact, Casey, you're doing work and international work yourself, right, through uh, BSM. Tell us about that. Yes, the Baptist Student Ministry, especially at UT Dallas, has um, lots of international students. Uh, I think it's the highest number in Texas um, as far as uh, different, like you said, uh, different countries represented. So there's Indian students, Chinese students, I'm sure we'll get into it, but it's been an awesome opportunity. to work with not just the students who are from Dallas or even from Texas, but also, like you said, the nations are coming here. Well, and that was actually, I think, part of how you got into this work. I think you told me a little while ago that uh, when you first came to DTS, the library was closed and you ended up up at UTD and you looked around and said, Mm -hmm. wait a minute, there's all these Indians. Tell us more about that. Yeah, so it was a Sunday, you know, DTS library was closed, obviously, and uh, I was with my dear friend of mine and we just... We wanted to go to some other library, and we ended up in UTD. And as soon as I entered, you know, that was the first time I entered UTD, you know, and and I saw that so many Indian faces. Like I was for a wait a minute, am I am I in India? <laughs> uh, and that's actually started the whole thing. As and I just started to talk with the students over there, and and it was it was a natural thing for me to just then go every other every time, you know, to the campus over there. So. So you all had a real advantage. You didn't have to, in a sense, cross cultures. It was more like, oh my gosh, I'm I'm home. Yes, yes, reaching to our own culture. <laughs> they were all many many Indian students, and the moment they they see us and they want to be home because they're away from their home and they're homesick and they're alone here, and they definitely wanted to be with us and have that fellowship and friendship and. And spend time with us. Um, that was that was so natural. Yeah. Yes, an it easy was, way to connect with people. Yes, yes, absolutely. We That's were awesome. able to connect. Yes. So, how did you get involved with International Students Incorporated? 
So um, it was actually with uh, with that uh, how it started, and uh, uh, maybe you want to start. Yeah, I was your actually a, actually <laughs> a fun story because I had taken a DTS uh, course on World Missions WM one hundred one, and we had a an assignment on you know international friendship, and uh, the 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 assignment was such that you had to have meet some you know people who whom you need to you know meet and talk and understand the culture so it 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 cannot be a, it cannot be a, a north american and it cannot be from your culture and so i'm here in the us just a month i have no car i have nothing <laughs> and where will i find it <laughs> and, <laughs> and so uh, I, i didn't know what to do and that's how you know i got connected with you know uh, isi ministry and i went uh, somebody took me to to uh, to a home group and this this were all chinese scholars in from utd and uh, so i went to the first time a home group uh, in, in on a Saturday, on a friday night mm-hmm. and we we were we both went with our kids and uh, it was an assignment at where i really got to meet some people i, I in fact got a friend who's chinese and he's like uh, uh, kind of uh, he he's a, he was a professor from a, from from china and came here as a research scholar and and uh, we our friendship developed beyond that assignment and beyond that semester mm-hmm. and yeah. we actually got into we never yeah. thought you know he, that he came as a family and yeah. their his kids were friends with our kids and, and it yeah. was good and so from then our association with ISI started you know mm-hmm. and then i came to know that hey they they're having a bigger ministry in utd campus and the, i mentioned you yeah, went to the library and all of that stuff and and uh, yeah so that's how it was And and just to clarify the history of ISI International Students Incorporated goes back into what the 1950s 60s Yeah it's it's quite quite very old here yeah Yeah I mean I mean the the founder really had a vision mm-hmm. way back then for international students coming to the United States and realizing what a great opportunity this was to engage um people as you say they're yeah. they're out of their mm-hmm. normal context yeah. Yes and that little bit of dis- disequilibrium um at least opens their awareness or or interest in uh, if nothing else in a friendly face and somebody who Correct. you know makes them feel welcome yeah. absolutely yeah yeah i mean especially f- uh, for the fact that now the situations in india um are like you know pretty closed you know so this gives us an opportunity to actually um witness you know the christ love in mm-hmm. us So uh, whenever we approach uh, students it's it's mostly like it's because we we love Christ we want to show that Christ love to them mm. and therefore we develop that friendships and you know the relationships with them which is uh, genuine friendships are not with any secret agenda or right. anything so that's how we wanted to keep our um, friendships all about uh with and then this is this is like a huge opportunity for us to reach out to the students yep so that's that's, that's as, as she mentioned over there you know we so we don't see this as a tool to reach christ we we what we have seen and learned is uh because what christ has done in our life we you know we just simply serve mm-hmm. them and be authentic and and uh, just open up our lives to them and so it's a very 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 authentic and very natural relationship so we don't have any as you mentioned rightly we don't have any agenda right you know? of course we that which is very close to our own heart like you know we we what we believe to be true and good we we wish it for everybody else mm-hmm. and so that's the message of love of jesus christ but our friendships are you know genuine our friendships are authentic you know and uh, just be real and being being real with them yeah yeah we want to invite them to our homes and we want to share them our love and share our lives and we want them to see what Christ has done in our lives like how we enjoy that joy in our lives and we want them to see it and witness it and mm-hmm. we invite them to our homes that's because we want them to be with us So it sounds like first and foremost it's a posture of hospitality. Yeah. It is. We want yeah. to welcome people into yeah. our home and into our lives and having come there obviously because you're Christ followers they mm-hmm. 
I think the New Testament describes it as they, they smell a certain aroma of, of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. In our conversations, you know, we, it's, it's, you know they, over the period of time, they would definitely, you know, ask. And very simple, for example, you know, we, we don't do anything that is, uh, you know, something which we would not otherwise do in our, you know, in our family. For example, when they, we are all here, hey, it's our, it's our tradition, it's our custom to, you know, uh, pray before we have the meal. So, you know, would you like to join us? Or obviously, yeah, they all, nobody says no, you know, and yeah. we all we pray together. And that is, you know, they understand, oh, yeah, okay, so this is how you do it, you know. And then there will be some conversations which they may ask on this matter, and then we have an opportunity to just tell it out to them. So, That's great. so yeah, we don't do anything which we don't do it kind of thing. You know, right. it's yeah. what's just being natural, what we do in our house, you know. Our, yeah. So. I yes. mean, our children are a very good conversation starter. <laughs> <laughs> I have two girls. Yes. They're, they're fun to be with. So uh, once it happened that we had this uh, few girls, we invited them home. And then we were having good food, so I made good South Indian food, and we were just having a good time uh, having food. And then uh, my younger one... Um, she was then six, so she was she was saying that you know, my uh, I have a newborn cousin, and she was telling so exactly telling about her cousin, and there was some discussion that came up, and she said that uh, that she's a sinner, so all the girls kind of stopped, like the six year old using a big word, mm. saying that she's a sinner, and then and then again uh, she said that uh, like. Even my newborn cousin is a sinner. (laughs) (laughs) And that, like, caught the attention. So all these girls are, like, now very much, you know, interested to find out why she said that. So Sandeep actually took that opportunity and, like, we didn't want to do anything preaching over there, but he just kept asking her questions. Mm -hmm. Like, why do you think you're a sinner? What made it? So how can you be saved? You know, it's just like simple questions. And this little girl over the top, she was just answering all that, no filters. She's just telling about how Christ loved and how Christ saved her. And that was, that made those girls to think that if the little girl could say that she is a sinner, then, you know, how much they would need Christ. So things like that, we would just open the conversations and then we would um, ask them. Yeah. That's awesome. That sounds, I love that your whole family is involved. It is. In fact, yeah, it's a whole family thing, you know. Uh, <laughs> I would have not done, although my, you, you mentioned my title as campus minister, although, but it's it's actually the entire family who's part of it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. It yeah. sounds like you're doing several things. You're yeah. creating a place for people to feel welcome and ha- helping them to feel comfortable in mm-hmm. addition to just living the Christian life in front of them. Yeah. So, our, our, in fact, so we see our home as the you know the place where it all takes place you know mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. so home is where everything is they are they are coming to our houses you know so where uh, we all are there my children are there and so it's it's everything is there and it's in front of them you know so I think so so you mentioned the food part and I love the cook <laughs> so I have to ask this question <laughs> you know I'm I'm. So you're Indian, and let's say you had Chinese folks over. Mm-hmm. So the question becomes, you know, what's what's going to be the menu? Are, are you going to cook Indian food for these Chinese folks? Are you going to attempt to do Chinese food, to, you know, so they feel comfortable? Or are you going to say, hey, we're in Texas, we're going to grill out? <laughs> <laughs> so usually in our home groups, um, we invite, we will have this mixed crowd, like, any student from any background, they would come in. But what we usually try to understand is that when the students sign up that they want to come in, we would like to know their preference of the Uh food. So based on that preference, uh, we would make multiple items over there that at least they should not go back hungry. Yes, <laughs> that's that's the goal. That you know they should they should have something to eat. There's some comfort food of their culture that they can easily go without asking any questions. But if we are inviting them home, we usually invite students in a smaller groups because we wanted to have spend time with them. You know, talk some to them, have a yeah fellowship with them. So so therefore we want to invite the smaller groups. So when we are inviting the smaller groups, we know exactly what their preferences are. And when we talk about India, it's it's not just one culture. No. 
it's it's like a so lot. much of subcultures that are there. So even in that also we would make sure like if they are from South Indian or North Indian or the ones who would not touch anything um, of meat, then we make sure that it is even cooked in that style so that they are comfortable and they are accepted in our culture. So so that's, that's how we take care, we try to take care. Yeah. Um, and then we intentionally work towards showing that love um, of Christ to them. Yeah. So food is a great conversation opener, you know. Mm-hmm. And you know, so we we have you know some some foods which will be new new to them, you know. And uh, but we 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 first need to know, you know, hey, what are the kinds of food you you prefer eating and all of that stuff. But we can, you know, we, we'll. The best part of India is that you know you if you know the. If you know what what they eat and their preferences, we can make different things, you know, mm-hmm. mix and match and make a lot of things. And uh, it's 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 basically good conversation starter where they ask about this, and we we have an opportunity to ask to them about you know, hey, tell me something about what do you do with this? If you get if you get these ingredients, how do you prepare this particular thing? And you know, that's mm-hmm. it. Sounds like right. the name of the game is flexibility. I think uh-huh. of like the <laughs> the yeah. Baptist Student Ministry and BSM at UT okay. Dallas has vegetarian options. If they're going to provide a free lunch, they have yeah. non-veg options and yes. different yeah different opportunities for like you said. You never know who's walking in the door, and you want people to feel comfortable. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 And food is definitely an important part of if you want students to come after their busy week. A food plays a major role. <laughs> they well, don't really want to come. The Italians have a saying: uh, "I cannot know you until I have dined with you," <laughs> and I love that. You know, it, 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 food does have a way of bringing people together, which is, of course, a large part of why the Lord instituted mm-hmm. the Lord's Supper. Yeah, it's a unifying thing. Yeah, I always see. You know, whenever the the Lord met these disciples. You always had that, you know, have you a fish? Yeah. You know, kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned flexibility. It also sounds like um, in welcoming people from different cultures into one's home, y- you have to give it a bit of forethought about what culture are these folks coming from, and I assume do a little bit of, you know, background research to the extent that you can to understand, you know, where are these folks coming from? Yes, that is very important. It's mostly uh, uh, our mission is mostly oriented towards South Asian, but again, South Asians are it's a very big diverse thing. Yeah. Now, even India, for that matter, you know, we just oh, yeah. you cannot put India in a one box because there are several mm-hmm. cultures. We have twenty five hundred people groups within India itself. So. Right. Uh, we yeah definitely things are very different in the north and the south. Yes, very much. A small example, you know, um, when I met her. For the first time, guess what was our <laughs> common language? It was English because I didn't know to speak her language, is Telugu, yeah. and she didn't know my language, it's yes. Malayalam. Yes. Wow. And uh, we, so English became our language <laughs> of the family, you know. Wow. So there's 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 a lot, you know. This way we just just different. Two two uh, cuisines are different. Food is different. Everything is different. <laughs> yeah. 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 And um, and also like uh, uh, when. The, this talking over the subculture and to be aware of this culture that uh, you know when before assuming something about the culture we need to know what their assumptions are mm. so like we had this interesting thing it's like in a, one of our home group we have uh, our elderly couple from our church who uh, ministers among uh, along with us to the international students so so you know during the food or the food they were, those younger students who were having conversation with him and he mentioned his age so so there's in in india it is like with the age there's a respect that that is so much attached to it mm-hmm. so so what happens is that uh, after the food is, is done so we called everyone for games so immediately the student got up and gave hand to him Whereas, you know, he wasn't expecting that. <laughs> so, I mean, he felt a little like, you know, I didn't ask for the help. Like, I can do it myself, you know. <laughs> but in his context, it was a respect, you know, giving that respect. Courtesy. Yes, mm-hmm. giving that hand. And whereas, you know, uh, this couple took it like, you know, no, I'm not in need of a help. <laughs> you know, so, so they were like 
this That's this difference, like you know, before we assume something yeah. from yes. the other culture, like it's that, what are their assumptions are about. Yeah. That's a great point. Yeah, I. Uh, I was a college student on a mission trip one time in, in Canada, and uh, we're from Texas, so we all said yes, ma'am, and yes, mm-hmm. sir, and mm-hmm. um, and one of the women like found that offensive. Ma'am was like, I'm old enough to be a ma'am, you know? Like, excuse <laughs> me, like you're talking about yeah, here, yeah. something is respectful, and like right. somewhere else it might yeah. be. that's that's so so true, you know. So always good to know, you know, the what what is you know what what does that symbol or that you know that so. Best thing is to detach any any symbols or things which we have attached to a particular kind of you know assumption. So, for ex- another example would be like here it's very common you know that you know when you meet people you, you hug you know and opposite sex and all. But uh, in certain cultures, especially Eastern cultures, that may not be very common. Appropriate. Yeah, mm-hmm. and in the other way, you know, it's very common like people with, if you're friends with same sex. You know, uh, so you can hold hands and you know you yeah. hug each and go and that's very common there. Mm-hmm. But if 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 that is important here, you know, you it has a very different. different <laughs> you know? So yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Do yeah. you ever run into situations culturally where uh, I don't know if ISI has single women, you know, that that want to host groups of students in their home? Are there like challenges with oh you know? Single men might, from a certain culture, might feel uncomfortable coming to a single woman's house. It's a that good sort point. Of thing. Yeah, we do have something called the Friendship Partner Program, where we, we kind of we match uh, people, you know, those, those international students with a person local over here. So we, we uh, if it's a single and single person, we we were very careful that it would be the same gender, you know. Gotcha. Uh, but if it's a large group, and you know, it's it doesn't doesn't much matter because it's 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 a it's a bigger group. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, you know, the other aspect of your question is that, you know, when the international students comes, especially boys, I think, would would not mind. They would go whoever invites. Right. They are, you know, they will go out. But whereas coming to the girls, they are very careful about, you know, when they are, who they are getting into. Right. Sometimes I get calls from their parents to make sure, you know, that, you know, they're going into the right home. Sure. Even if we invite them home, yeah. they would want to know, like, who. They're looking it, out for their yes, daughter. Yes. So there's kind of like a trust that needs to be developed uh, with girls. That's what we have noticed, especially with the girls, when they have to come to our home or, or come with us. Uh, whereas with the boys, you know, whoever is single women or single men, whoever invites them, they would usually go out. You know, they're fine with it. So, yeah, that's that's the only thing that we would take care. But I've, I've spoken with many parents. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we've talked about food. We've talked about male-female relationships and about, you know, physical touch and things like that. Are there other general areas to keep in mind about what – assumptions we should not make just categories for um things that other cultures you know might have a different view of yeah um, i have seen that you know although cultures look very different i you know they, they are not you know too different you know there are, there are there are what happens is that for example there are general concepts like for example uh, love or you know uh, caring for each other all this these are universal, I guess so, but it it may manifest in a very different form. You know, uh, like for example, um, yeah, over here I've seen you know like as as children grow, you know, the, when they are like uh, of a particular age, the parents kind of you know uh, the, the children are allowed you know they are like given out like independence and they they don't that's. That's out of love and concern. That's that's a good virtue here. But at the same time, in, in for example, in Eastern culture, um, you know, the, wherever the children are, are there, the parents will move with them. That kind of thing, you know. So two opposite things. Right. But the 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 intent or the motive I see is that you know it's it's universal. It's the same thing, you know. But, but it manifests differently. Yeah. 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 So would you say that asking questions is uh, is a good way to avoid making assumptions about what, to what someone does or doesn't? I think that is that is really good to to you know ask you know. Uh, mm-hmm. be, be, bro, the thing is sometimes when we are so focused on ministry that we are immediately going to the helping mode. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, and sometimes that's a trouble. You know, it's better to 
Yeah, sometimes all I we have learned this that you know it's always good to before how can I help you know you know how can I learn from you guys you know when I learn something then I can you know put into kind of you know uh, a practice you know kind of so again uh, you know we had we, we, like for example we had a we had a uh, uh, like an Indian fellowship you know with few friends and we were supposed to reach there like on an afternoon for lunch and uh, I was on my way. And I got a call from a student that they got it. They got into an accident, so I just had to change and go there and take care of all of that. And it was like around three uh, thirty in the afternoon, and and we said that hey, we we have to cancel. Uh, we cannot come, you know. So you guys proceed. And they said no, no, no. Whatever time it is, you will come. You will just come. And then okay. So anyway, we came, and then we when we went there, they were all waiting for us to even start the lunch. Mm. Wow. And that. <laughs> They did not have uh, the lunch because they, that's the part of the that's the part they show their their culture. But you know we have the same you know kind of experience with you know and uh, in, in another culture. Um, and uh, what they said was, hey, uh, you know, we sorry that you know uh, you know please take your time and we can do meet later on. Reschedule. Yeah, reschedule it. But you know they were caring enough that what they did was that they sent you know. F- Food to us through Uber Eats, so that's a different wow. way of oh, doing it. Interesting. Yes. Uh, that's so. There is. I don't see you know wrong or right. One culture operates in a different way. You know, one one operates in another way. Both were doing their best. That's great. I love yeah. that. Be a learner before you're a helper. Yeah. 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 And I guess in some situations, just because somebody is in need doesn't necessarily mean they want your help. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. That, that's true. Yeah. That's so. <laughs> yeah, the example which you know she gave. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Offering the hand doesn't mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a help. And also, like, you know, um, talking about that subcultures, like, you know, to not to um, classify them or put them into our categories, you mm-hmm. know, because, um, like, two, two funny experiences is like, you know, I, because we come from India, they would assume, like, you know, do, do you eat oh, beef? Because India is a whole a huge country and right. there are different parts and different food it's like it's not just one blanket the the funny thing is that you know in our home itself and the different generations how the culture kind of changes so uh, my older one and my younger one there's five years apart and at the at, at the table dining table so my younger one goes so in the school this, they're having this discussion that her friend asked her like hey can you speak Indian and then she goes, yeah, I can speak Indian. She's proud. It's like, okay, can you say a sentence? And then, and then she goes that, you know, Mera naam, uh, Abigail. And, and then my older one goes like, there is nothing called as Indian language. <laughs> <laughs> what you just said is a Hindi language. Right. You know, it's like, you know, the understanding about that, you know, just in the same home, even though she's exposed to the different things, like, the understanding so when when students also come in like they might be like from the same country but you know they're not the same totally, culture yes totally different in how they respond to the things and how they eat and how they um, you know uh, take the responses yeah it's it's yeah. different well that's a really good point for particularly Americans to hear you know, Europeans still have different sort of cultural distinctions, but mm-hmm. here in America, you know, it, it's such a melting pot, as we call it, mm-hmm. where, you know, people generally start to learn to speak English and they mm-hmm. start to adopt um, so called American ways. And, mm-hmm. you know, more and more cultural distinctions are, are being held on to more, but it's it's still, a you know, just a, a, mm-hmm. a very, uh, relatively more homogeneous culture and it's easy to forget many countries around the world you know there may be boundaries like you know somebody drew a bunch of lines but these are very very different people groups within all those lines yep that's yeah. that's that so true. true yeah like you know very for example the moment we say india you know first you know, talk about marriage they say oh you know so you're you're so you all have arranged marriage. Tell how it was. Right. <laughs> no, I, uh, yeah, it, that largely takes place. But you know, uh, the in the, in the new, in the, in especially in the cities, in the urban cultures, th- those things are changing. Dynamics are changing. Mm-hmm. I knew my, I dated her, you know, before <laughs> marriage. I knew her well before, yeah. you know. So, so you know, as you said, you know, asking is good rather than immediately, you know, you know, telling this, you know, statement. Yeah. Right. If I know 
one person from a country. I don't know everyone in that country. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I suppose you have an added dynamic. You mentioned that so many of the students that come to study in the States, mm -hmm. these folks are at the graduate and doctoral levels, mm -hmm. right? And they're future leaders back in their countries. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's been my experience that with more education and and particularly if they're working with a corporation or something, the, the, a lot of those cultural distinctions have sort of taken a back seat to what they have to deal with you know, at a at a global international level, mm -hmm. uh, and and while they don't, you know, dismiss those things, those things at the same time don't have quite the same hold on them that they might if they were, you know, in country, in culture, mm -hmm. sort of, and and particularly uneducated. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for sure, uh, when they when they come over here, they're they're perspective about the things change and their understanding about the things change and then we have seen that this understanding would impact back to their families hmm. and as i mentioned earlier that how i get to speak to their families you know to their parents and and they would um they would be so thankful to us that we're actually taking care of their children hmm. and then even though, um, like, you know, we want to share the love and, you know, Christ's love to them, but at least that, that understanding in India about, like, you know, about the Christianity or the, the missionaries or, you know, they're, they're only concerned about, you know, whatever the conversions that they're, it's not that. It is actually our life shows the love of Christ. Right. And we want uh, them to know that it is love of Christ why we are doing it, nothing, nothing else. And when that message is passed back to their homes, you know, their understanding and their perspective of looking at Christians kind of changes and softens. Mm -hmm. um, um, so that's, that, that's what we have seen, like it's, it's so amazing how Christ can work between just few friendships, how he can actually work. Yeah, right. and definitely, as you mentioned, there is, uh, when they come over here, they you know they 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 are here to explore, and so you know they want to they want to learn, they want to right. see, mm -hmm. they want to understand, you know, which definitely back back in their own homes there is there is there is some kind of limit, uh, you know, there is there is a limit mm -hmm. on it. It's mm -hmm. not possible to do many things. But over here, they they come here, they explore, they you know, just for example, last week um, uh, we took a bunch of students, you know, uh, uh, to to NASA. Houston, you know, it's oh, wow. just called a space weekend. We had, Fun. yeah, we had, we had a, a stay overnight, and so we went to the uh, to the NASA facility and everything. And it was also an opportunity for them to see other things. Like for example, we had uh, the the next day we invited all of them to attend a local church, and so mm -hmm. many of them attended that for the first time, and mm -hmm. oh. and and they had a lot of questions because you know they. They have. They also have. So when when yes. the when we as international students come, we have some assumptions, and so they had. They uh, out of the lunch, they asking me, "Oh, I was thinking that you know a church is like this or something else, but this is a little different, you know." And tell me, tell us about more. this thing. Or so it's it's it's. Mm -hmm. They are happy to engage mm -hmm. in you know, and this, and in fact, this when they come over here, it opens up a world for them to yes. explore, mm -hmm. learn. Yeah. 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 So it's a really strategic opportunity, not just for the student that you're actually interacting with, but also for mm -hmm. their family and also. Oh yes, yes, yes. Yes. All of them have very strong connections back home, you know. So you know, it 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 works in ways we may not really realize here right now. You know, how does it work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even in our home group, uh, when we actually arrange for, we meet some Fridays in a month. So it's it's not just we who would be there to interact with the students. We have. Um, our whole church is actually behind us, kind of supporting it, you know, they, because they also love, want to reach out to these international students. So they help with uh, cooking, getting the meal ready for them, and all these international students uh, do not have their own transportation. Mm. So around like 50 uh, students, if you have to get them to the home group, we need so many cars and so many drivers right so even though they they won't stay for the whole thing they would just pick up the student and drop them 
and then again pick them back up. But it's another then, touch. Yes. yes. And yes. then they they have the relation. We encourage, you know, yeah. you know, meet up these guys later because they have they have other needs like going to the groceries, you know, you know. So and so I'm so glad that there are other people who, you know, meet up with these four or five students regularly and there are a lot of conversations that takes place mm -hmm. and it's a great opportunity actually for for you know to minister actually, to to serve the, the love of Christ in various ways, you know, which just opens up naturally. Well, that's a great bridge to a question I wanted to ask. So, let's say here I am, you know, say me and my wife, and I grew up here in Dallas, and, you know, Dallas looked a whole lot different when I was a kid. I mean, you know, they're, they're I hate to say it, but we didn't have folks from India, you know, living in Dallas, at least that I was aware of, okay? Very homogeneous town, and today I look around, I see all these different groups, and, you know, at times it's a little scary. But I listen to this podcast, and I go, huh. I never thought about it. I actually could do global ministry right here in Dallas. So tell me, how would I get started in that? You know, I'm not quite ready to, you know, I don't even know we need internationals. I'm not ready to have a bunch of people in my home. But mm -hmm. what would be some first steps that I could take? And then maybe when we've talked about that a little bit, what could a church do that wanted to engage in some of these things? So wh where, would, where would I and my wife get started? It's a good good question actually you know I would always encourage start with an existing relationship you know mm -hmm. like like for example you know uh, in, in UTD for it just give you an example there's already you know we we have you know certain ministries like like ISI or mm -hmm. BSM. BSM there is so and and so in you and you I, I was just mentioning before we started that in UTD it's very unique we all do the ministry together as a, as, as you know we, we are known as UTD big howdy so any it's a good Texas name. Yeah. <laughs> so any student who comes, they know UTD Big Howdy. So what do we do is that we have, uh, like, we, we, we network with the existing relationship over there. In UTD, there is Indian Students Association, mm -hmm. or Chinese Students Association. Mm -hmm. meet, meeting. So we meet them, ask them, hey, how we can help you? And, uh, you know, most of the time it will be like, hey, we, we need airport pickups. Like, 1,500 students are coming wow. this summer. Mm -hmm. We need help with airport pickups. And we know how this, uh, you know, Dallas public transport is. So, right. Yeah. So definitely. Uh, so best thing, you know. Okay. So okay, we can do that. And so then we reach out to to churches who are interested. You know, individuals who are interested. And so and that becomes the you know the the first point of entry. And then oh, from the from you you pick up a few students from the airport. And then hey, okay, let me know if there is any help. You need any grocery to be done. And oh yes, okay. So okay. Second Saturday, I'll be available for you, and so you go help them with the groceries, and mm. so you know it's it's just building one step on the other, you know. And I mean, I, I I just feel that just just visiting the university that will open up a huge. I mean, that happened yeah. to us. You know, I right. just visited it without any thinking mm. about it, and it mm. naturally you know started so much of relationships there. Sure. So I'm sure for people you know who aren't local to UT Dallas specifically, they can look up you know a university in their area yes. or somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Any. I mean. I mean, all universities, you know, here attract international students. Right. That's the beauty of it, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's huge. It's, and it's in Texas, especially. Texas is, I think, the number third state that attracts international students. You wow. Know? Yeah. And the, in UTD, there are, right, there are around right, 8,000 plus international students. So it's a huge number, you know. Um, mm. and, so, and there, there is always ways, you know, there, and there is always some existing... Uh, ministry which is already there and so I would always encourage you know, just get in touch with you know they'll that, find a place yeah, for you absolutely yeah. Mm -hmm. we are always yeah. in need of volunteers every time you know yeah. um, we never we, we never we never we never say that oh we are full no mm -hmm. we are always in need because we because there's a flow of international students is increasing every yeah. you know every semester and it's not only the airport pickups there are like several opportunities now this time especially with the the, the housing situation going. Oh, yes. So there's many students who couldn't find an apartment, uh, mm. a place, even for the temporary apartment before they could come in. and But they have to come in because their classes are going to start. Yeah. So they are actually, again, you know, big how do we reached out to the churches and the homes, you know, there are many people who open their homes for a week or two for the student to be there with them until they find their accommodation. Hmm. So that's that's another uh, amazing way that we can reach out to them, to the students, and as churches, how they can, you know, be with them. And, you know, it, it's such a relief for the parents to know that, you know, 
their children are not like you know somewhere on our own. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. That just well before the semester of. started, we had a we had a student, a female student who you know who stayed with us for a week, you know, before she got her accommodation finalized. And once somebody stays at your house, you know, that's a that opens up a big relationship, you mm-hmm. know, because they'll become a part and parcel of your family, you know. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. you're meeting practical needs and getting yes. to know one another. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and you mentioned the importance of family, so I could also imagine a family that has younger children mm-hmm. sort of welcoming a family, you know, they're coming in to study and they have younger children and mm-hmm. it just seems like a natural yes. connection. Children open up the the biggest, you know, there yeah. there is no boundaries. There are no, you know, no no, no mental lines or anything. So no natural. filters. No filters. <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> and that's the I think that's that, that's the biggest benefit to serve as a family. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're big icebreakers. Yeah. They can just be, and, and you can be as you are, like, you know, and do what you know we're doing. Is, you know, you're not doing mm-hmm. anything out of the way. You're just being what as you are and you know, just as a you know, as honoring Christ in your family, you're just doing that. Right. You don't have to be an expert on every single culture in the world to no, get started. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And we are learning. Actually, we are learning. Actually, we we are not perfect, right? So we are asking questions to them, and they are asking questions. We are telling, oh, that's how it happens, and they'll ask to us, this happens, and so through our, you know, this is also a time where you know, uh, you know, we share the vulnerabilities, and that's how we actually come closer. You know, so it's it's actually works two ways. You know, we think we are ministering. But in a way, we are learning a lot, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and God is using that, those experiences. So. Well, yeah. you, when you mentioned children, the, the thing that comes to my mind is soccer because, you know, soccer is played universally, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and, and uh, that, that if food is a connection, sports is, can be another connection for yes. a lot of people. Yes. yes. As yeah. well as music for that music. matter. Music, yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. These are yeah. kind of, these are different kinds of arts, you know. Right. That's another way of thing, you know, the, uh, talking about certain things. Hey, what is this? In, you know, you have we have in our in our place we have certain uh, things which show certain things in, and and uh, depict certain cultures. And you know, there's a they ask, what is this? What does this art piece mean? You know, uh, so it's an opportunity. So these are things where we can have a lot of plenty of conversations. Yeah, even in our home, um, even though we both are from India, but we both are so different in our culture we have five languages in our home wow. so <laughs> we have like this mixture so when when students come in like you know it's it is so interesting for them to like know about our culture and you know how did how could these two cultures could meet and you know how how we are getting into one culture now like you know what is and our children's culture is completely different to what how mm-hmm. we grew up and yeah. how they look at the mm-hmm. things so, yeah, it's it's all like learning when when they come in. You know, we learn from them and how they look at the way we do the things, and then they would ask questions. And it, it's a good thing that you know they they feel comfortable to ask questions instead of just you know assuming certain things and you know go with that idea. Yeah. And we wanted to like cultivate that um, thing that you know if at all there's something that you don't understand to ask mm-hmm. and you know so that we both are at the same understanding and on the same page yes it takes a certain level of humility to yeah. admit oh i guess i'm ignorant about this or i never yeah. thought about anything that way yeah are there resources that you would recommend to people whether books or articles or oh, anything yes. like that <laughs> uh, one good book uh, i mean I, I remember is you know a uh, book by elmer the uh, i just I forgot the exact title of that book. Uh, it's on on culture, actually. It's, it's, it's the author is Elmer. Mm-hmm. I really E L M E R. Yes, it was really, really, really good uh, to to actually understand and engage with cultures and all of that thing. Uh, perspectives is another. Yeah, perspectives is a course on basically world missions, right? Yes. That yes. Uh, who who oversees it or is it own standard uh, it is, it's called as perspective it's called or, perspectives yeah. yes and yeah, many churches and they also do have that there's a course and also there is a there's a good book actually you know and in fact the book is excellent yeah. yeah those are really excellent and they have certain cases and all of that so that really really helps you know and um, and of course um, the the website on you know internationalstudents.org that that will definitely you know have a lot of things on that you know um, to, just to get a brief overview of of these things yeah yeah, uh, 
uh, I would say like not to not to worry if you are really want to reach the next door neighbor who is from a different culture. It just starts with a simple hello to them and just trying to know them with a good question. So eventually you'll get there. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, that that that's absolutely true. You know, the the early Christians. I'm, I'm talking about the first, you know, three four centuries. I mean, that really was their strategy, if if you want to call it that. In one sense, they they didn't have a formalized evangelistic strategy. Their main objective was to worship God and be His distinctive people, mm-hmm. and live together in community. The way they lived their lives then was noticeable to the surrounding cultures, right? With whom they had to work and interact and mm-hmm. be in community, but it was again that aroma of Christ. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They weren't. I mean, there's a lot of documentation on this, but they were not sitting around thinking, "How are we going to reach our neighbor for Jesus?" Yeah. Yeah. They were saying, "How are we going to be God's people for mm-hmm. for here?" Mm-hmm. God is sovereign. He loves people. He will call people to himself as he wills. Yes. But my job is to love my neighbor. Mm -hmm. And they made a big point of that. That was like their, you know, just like you said earlier, it's a second commandment. My first task is to love my neighbor. Right. Yeah. That's that's so true. Yeah. Love so. So loving my neighbor is. I always we always get reminded that by loving our neighbor is not a, a tool, to reach something end. Loving our neighbor is what we are commanded to it's do. It's inherent. So yes, yeah. that is what we are doing. That's what we are doing. Who proved uh, to be a neighbor to this person? Yeah, is the question. Yes. Is yeah, that's true. And so here's somebody from a different culture. Yeah. Or you know, in your case, somewhat similar culture, but it, you know, somebody who's displaced. They're a stranger, mm-hmm. trying to educate themselves, and the question is: So who's going to be a neighbor to those folks? Yeah. That's true. Is what yeah. you're basically asking. Yeah. Yes. Actually, you put that, you know, that's how we actually open our home groups. Like, because they come with this question, like, why are they being so nice? Mm-hmm. Like, like what? what's the catch? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and it's difficult for them to understand because we go at the odd hours to pick them up, we host them, and, and why? Like, you know, to understand that it's because we love Christ. And we, what Christ did for us. We love because He first loved us. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's what we make it very. You know, when people have a quest- lot of questions. Of course, they'll have. You know, so we make it very clear. Hey, you know, we are disciples of Christ, and our Lord commanded us, asked us to love the neighbor. And so, when we are doing all of these serving, so actually, you are giving us an opportunity to fulfill. The command given by our Lord. Exactly. So thank you for doing that. You know. Right. Well, yeah. thank you all, Sandeep and Pratnutha, for being with us today. Yeah, thank absolutely. You. This is thank so you. helpful. And we started with Matthew uh, 28, and and we can end with a, another version of that in Acts 1:8. Mm-hmm. Jesus said he wanted us to be his witnesses, beginning where? Beginning in Jerusalem. Mm-hmm. Meaning we start at home. Yes, he wants us to go, but maybe it's just to go down the street, yeah. go to the local university, mm-hmm. that, that he's got somebody right there mm-hmm. on our doorstep that we can reach out to with the love of Christ. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. right. So, yeah. well, thank you all for being with us. Casey, thank you for helping co-host today. I'm Bill Hendricks, and I invite you to back next time on The Table Podcast where we discuss issues of God and culture. For listening to the Table Podcast, Dallas Theological Seminary. Teach truth, love well.